Welcome to the weekly economic snapshot. Although inflation has come down significantly from its peak in 2022, each new release of inflation data is still being closely watched for signs about what the Fed might do with interest rates. The Fed has said they are waiting for the data to give them confidence that inflation is coming sustainably down to their 2% goal before cutting the federal funds rate target. Late last year, it looked like we were on track to get there soon, but the data from the first quarter of 2024 haven't been as encouraging. The Fed's inflation target is for a measure called the PCE, that's Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index. Since we're still looking at inflation data carefully, today I'll explain a little how that differs from the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. The CPI is produced by the Bureau of Labor Statistics based on prices for a bundle of goods that reflect the spending of typical urban consumers. The PCE Index is produced by the Bureau of Economic Analysis, which is the same agency that measures gross domestic product. Each month, they estimate total household consumption, when they do this, they try to remove the effects of price changes to measure how much the actual amount of goods and services households are buying have changed. The PCE index is a tool they use to convert the dollar amount of spending, what economists call nominal spending, to an inflation-adjusted or real number. Even though the CPI is better known, many economists prefer the PCE index. One reason for this is that we believe the CPI is biased upward. The main reason for this is that it is based on a basket of goods that doesn't change from one month to the next, and therefore doesn't fully account for how consumers adjust their spending when prices change. We call this substitution bias. For example, imagine if a frost in Florida caused the price of oranges to double overnight. Consumers would probably respond by purchasing fewer oranges and more apples. However, the number of oranges in the CPI basket wouldn't change. This makes the increase in the cost of living look worse than it actually is because it doesn't account for how consumers saved money by switching to apples. Inflation trends generally look similar using either measure, but on average, CPI inflation is about 0.4 percentage points higher than PCE inflation. Since the Fed's goal is 2% PCE inflation, that would mean having CPI inflation around 2.4%. One other important difference is that PCE includes purchases made on consumers' behalf, like employer-provided health insurance, while CPI does not. This means that healthcare has a higher weight in the PCE index, which reduces the importance of other categories like housing. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.